Hey everyone and welcome to the channel. So today I'm down at Alta Auto Group. We're gonna take a look at their 1996 BMW M3 E36. So huge shout out to them for providing this iconic sports car for me today. Definitely check out their website. They have a ton of awesome pre-owned inventory. That link is down in the description. The M3 that you see behind me has a really beautiful blue wrap to it, and they had an original MSRP right around $40,000. And to start off today's review for this second generation M3, let's take a look at what powers this. So this has the S50, a 3.2 liter straight six cylinder engine, paired to the five speed manual. It pumps out 240 horsepower, 236 pound feet of torque. Now for the European spec, that was 316 horsepower with similar torque. That power sent to the rear wheels, this weighs in right around 3,100 pounds. It'll do zero to 60 in six seconds with a top speed of 155 miles an hour. And it has a fuel capacity of 16.4 gallons. You'll expect to see around 18 miles per gallon in the city and 26 out on the highway. This has a wheelbase of 106.7 inches. Its overall length is 174 and a half. It has a width of 67.3 and a height of 52.6 inches. As we move on to the exterior styling now for this M3, I wanna go over all these subtle differences that make this an M3 over the normal three series. So we're going to start up front with this front bumper, which has a completely different style to it, along with the rectangular air inlet in the lower section. And then for this kidney grill, this has the carbon fiber surrounds with plenty of cutouts, provide a lot of cooling to that engine. BMW is right in the middle where you can see that plastic trim piece that runs right through it. And then the fog lights are also in the lower section of the bumper. But this even has more air inlets right in the inside of both of those fog lights down below. And then I believe that the carbon fiber front lip spoiler is aftermarket, but it looks very, very clean for the front end of this M3. Now the headlight design is really nice kind of squarish, more rectangular, kind of like the middle section of that bumper with the turn signals on the far corners. BMW badge is right in the middle. And then there's two lines that run down each side, kind of meeting the bodywork right on the outsides of that grill. This is a very clean M3, has a nice design to it. So as we work our way to the side now, this car has about an inch drop to it. These are aftermarket wheels, which match nicely with this wrap. You can see a side reflector along with the M badge right in that trim piece. Matches nicely with the trim piece in the middle of the bumper going all the way to the back of the car. Now, as far as side differences go for the M3, really the only two differences, the side mirrors have two posts connecting them instead of a single thinner one on the normal three series. And then the side skirt is shaped just a little bit differently to help with more aerodynamics, taking all the air away from the car so it doesn't go up underneath. And this even has a carbon fiber roof with a sunroof. You don't see that in modern cars today. If they have the carbon fiber roof, they usually don't have a sunroof. But this has a nice side design to it. There's a line right at the height of that door handle there. And then as I mentioned, the lines in the lower side skirt. And then as we work our way to the rear, biggest difference is the massive fixed wing that you can see, along with the rear diffuser, which is slightly different. The M3 badge is over on that right side. And then this does have the single exit exhaust over on that driver's side. Same rectangular design for those taillights as well. So with the exterior wrapped up on this very clean second gen M3, this has around 110,000 miles on it, but you would never tell. Very, very good condition. Now, like I said, this is the button to open up the trunk. Now this is pretty hard to do with one hand. That wing is very, very heavy, but we do have these struts on both sides, which do help out. This particular model here, I believe, was a track car because there's a lot of things that I would say are missing. You can see the entire floor liner is gone. Where a spare tire could go is not there. The battery is over on that passenger side there. So this is a pretty stripped out car, but if you wanted to daily drive this, you have a good amount of space. It's a very practical vehicle. And then there's even more of that insulation on the inside of the trunk. So it makes it a little bit more quiet while driving this. And with the weight of that wing, it's easy to close that trunk. Now let's work our way to the interior where we do have the turnkey. This doesn't have a smart key like traditional vehicles. And then the door panel is completely plain. We have a strap for the grab handle and a red strap for the release handle. That is it. Everything else is I believe a carbon fiber composite type material just to give it a lighter weight. There's no storage or anything. And then as we take a look at the interior, this model has a full roll cage. You can see the headliner is gone. The carbon fiber is exposed somewhat. 
There's even more of that insulation on the backside. So whoever owned this vehicle definitely had fun racing this around. Now with the roll cage, it's a little hard obviously to get to the back seats, but this is a four seater. So those are practical back seats. If you didn't have the roll cage in the way, you could use this as a practical sports car to have four people in and still have that trunk space. Now these Sparco racing seats, I believe are factory, but these look like they could be upgraded. I know that the M3 came with sport bucket seats. I don't believe they were Sparco's though, but these have a great design to them. I love all the support that they offer for a bucket seat. M3 is down on the door sill. It's even on the floor mat. And then to hop into this, it's actually pretty easy to do. And we have this M steering wheel. Now, again, I'm not sure if this is factory or not because this model has 110,000 miles on it. There's hardly anywhere on this Alcantara. So it could be reupholstered or a new steering wheel or very similar to the original one. All the BMW colors are stitched on the inside, has a really nice feel to it. Now I will say from the driver's seat, the steering wheel is more right than in a normal car. So it's a little odd to get used to. I'll talk about that once we get this out on the road. But with the key now, this is what the key looks like. We have lock on one side or unlock. There is only one button, but we have the turn key over on this right side with my foot on the brake and the clutch. We can fire this up. And looking at the gauge cluster, pretty simple. The fuel gauge is on the left side, temperature is on the right side, and then there's miles per hour and the analog tack right in the middle. Pretty much all you need. There's the odometer, your range, even the M badge in the lower section, and then your turn signals and some other information. So it's very basic, but that is pretty much all you need in a sports car, race car like this. Now on the left side is the headlights, along with the fog light adjustments. There's one air vent even a larger air vent right in the middle. And then below that, this is an aftermarket head unit for the radio. And then all the factory AC controls are just underneath that. Actually laid out pretty well. So you can easily adjust where you like it, temperature. This looks like a dual zone for, so for a 96, pretty impressive to see that with the temperature right in the middle and a few other controls. Now underneath that, it looks like we have a lot more buttons for your speed. So you can pull up that, look at your averages. There's even a limit. You can go to the timer. Look at any controls that you need to check. We have the consumption for your MPG. And then a few buttons over on this right side that I don't know do anything. They could do something, I just am not used to them. There's the clock and the date on that right side too. So pretty interesting to see that layout where you can quickly get to all this, even look at the temperature for the outside. And then there's a little bit of storage space underneath that. And then behind that, there's a 12 volt. And I am not sure what both of these buttons do. There's a speaker on this one. So maybe there's something that's aftermarket on this particular model. I don't believe that would be a factory switch in the middle there. But it looks like there are some blanks where maybe there was something that could have gone there. And then looking at this five-speed manual now, the BMW colors are stitched on the leather shift boot. We have reverse, which is over and up. There is no backup camera, so you had to look yourself, of course. And then we have the rest of the five speeds. Now on this side is the door locks, and then we even have the window controls nicely placed in the middle. So they are not on the door as you saw earlier, nicely placed on each side there. There are two cup holders right in the middle and a little bit of storage space on that back side if you need to use it, along with right in the middle, right behind it, the manual parking brake. We'll take another look, as you can tell, pretty stripped headliner there. Actually good amount of visibility, even with the roll cage and that massive wing. Now over on this passenger side, there's a BMW Motorsport International plaque. It looks to be wrapped in the same color as the exterior. There's an air vent on both sides and then the glove box as well. So a pretty cool, pretty simple interior for this M3. Let's get this out on the road. All right, now that we're behind the wheel of this M3, the first thing I wanna talk about is how different the seating position and steering wheel is. Now I'm not sure if this is going to be the same with every M3 because I think these are aftermarket seats. Maybe they're mounted a little bit off or maybe that's just how the M3 is with the transmission and how they have the paddles here, or the uh, the pedals here. Now the pedals feel fine, it's just the steering wheel is a little, a little to the right. So like this is kind of where I should be rather than right here. So it's a little bit interesting to get used to that. But what I want to talk about with this, I've only put a few miles on this M3 so far. And from my perspective, I always thought older cars looked cool, but I always thought oh, that's just an old car. It's, someone likes it, it's old, it's 
probably you know not going to drive like it does a modern vehicle and obviously technology and the driving of cars is completely different but until you actually get behind the wheel and really drive an older car for yourself can you start to appreciate the car itself and what i'm talking about is a lot of older 911s and gt3s even older gt3 rs's i've been able to get out on the road and drive and now it completely changes my perspective on cars like that it's just like oh it's just another porsche why would you get an older one but they are truly a lot of fun and now that we're behind the wheel of this m3 i've been in a lot of the newer m3s and i'll do a review with a newer m3 compared to this m3 at a later point but this is my kind of car i love i like this raw feeling i have a first gen r8 that's a little bit more newer than this but this is what I love. And if you're a true and car enthusiast, I can see why this E36 is such a popular sports car, even though it doesn't have crazy horsepower. New M3s are pushing, I think, right around 500 horsepower, give or take just a little bit on that number there. Even though this has significantly less horsepower, it is so much freaking fun to drive. You got the manual transmission. You have a lightweight car. It's not the fastest to 60. But this is a true back mountain roads car, true track car. And while it doesn't have that power, it's going to have that handling and performance that you're looking for in a vehicle like this. So I can honestly see now being behind the wheel of one of these older M3s, why you would want to buy it. Now this particular model here has been stripped of some of the creature comforts. If you wanted to drive this every single day, I am loud yelling slightly. Hopefully it's not a lot for the camera but I can definitely see why this is a fun car. It's crazy to see though, we got straps on the doors. You pretty much are just getting in this and driving it with the three pedals. We do have a radio, so if you wanna to listen to some tunes, it's gonna be a little bit hard though with that exhaust. And you can have three other people with you. So this is a 90s version of a practical daily driving sports car that you can actually use or going to the grocery store, just driving it every single day if you don't have any bigger items in it. But we'll give it another acceleration from second. And I'm not doing anything crazy today. The shifter is a little bit notchy, I will say. I mean that in a good way. And this clutch pedal is super light. So it's, it's pretty easy to go through these gears. The, the shifter is, again, a little notchy for my taste, but it's so easy to drive. And even going in a straight line, this is a fun car to drive. It's a little hard to rev match. Pedals are spaced slightly farther than I would, I would like, at least for my uh, shoe size. And so now as we switch over to the POV angle, you can see what it's like to be behind the wheel of this M3. Now hopefully you can tell from this angle how the steering wheel is and what I'm talking about. So my head is about level of course where I would sit and maybe you can see the steering wheel is a little bit over here. I'd like it to be kind of kind of right here in line with my hands. So it is slightly off and I do know that other cars, other older 90s cars and maybe even earlier have had issues like that and I don't, I don't know if issues is the right word. Maybe just the design element to the actual car. Uh, maybe not a design flaw in itself, maybe just the packaging. Now this is a car that you can have fun with, you can ring it out a lot more than what I'm doing, and it's a car that's not going to hit triple digit speeds quick enough where you could have some fun throwing it around, ringing out those gears like I mentioned, which I love. I love a car where you can actually use the gears and you're not just going first, second, third, fourth, all the way up just like that. You can actually use these gears and have fun with the car. That is my type of car, what I love doing on the back roads. And this car redlines right around 6,500. You could probably go to 7,000. So you could really ring this car out and even use one gear on some back mountain roads. So that's where the fun factor comes in. I don't think that is an, uh, a stock exhaust. Maybe it is and we can just hear it because there's not a lot of deadening on the inside of this car. But we're coming up to a turn so I can at least test the handling once here for today.
Oh yeah, this is a true M car for sure. Definitely a lot of fun to drive. Oh man, I wish I could take this home. That is, oh, this is a cool car. I love, I love race cars that you can drive on the street like this. We have those cool features like the straps. I mean, you only see that in true race cars, maybe some GT3s, cars like that are going to have features like that. And I think it's so cool when you can daily drive a car that's going to have pretty much that sports car, race car feel to it. So we'll give it another acceleration here. Visibility, really easy to see all around. Not the quickest car. I'm not going pedal to the floor, of course, but definitely a lot of fun. If you are in the market for an older M3, any older sports car, iconic car like this, for whatever brand it may be, you are truly getting a fun factor in that car. You're not getting all the tech. There's no digital screens, none of that. I don't think you can hook up your phone. You just hop in this car. You have three pedals. You have the steering wheel and you are ready to drive. But unfortunately, that is going to wrap it up for this 1996 BMW M3 E36. Once again, huge shout out to Alta Auto Group for providing this iconic BMW sports car for me today. If you enjoyed today's video, make sure you give it a huge thumbs up and consider smashing that subscribe button so you don't miss out on our daily uploads. And I will see you all in the next video.